Look, number four now, the uh, top weather events across western and central Wyoming for 2023. Come by this picture, that's a tornado right there. That occurred in Midwest uh, uh, during this date. It was on June 23rd, the severe weather outbreak across much of the area, mainly occurring in uh, Sweetwater, uh, Fremont, Johnson, the Toronto, and portions of Washakie County during the afternoon of this day. And the setup for it, we'll start by taking a look at the surface. Wyoming's right here, this little rectangle right here. You see the area low pressure, that's the L. And also you can see uh, two fronts coming off of this. This is the warm front right here, the half circles in the red, then the pendants here on the cold front off to the uh, south of the low. Now, much of the area where the severe weather occurred, which is right in this area, is what meteorologists call a triple point. Now, it's just the area where the low pressure and the two warm front and cold front come together. This does two things. Number one, because it's near the low, you have a lot of rotation in here that helps enhance shear to get those thunderstorms spinning. And number two, you have a lot of convergence in here. So a lot of moisture is getting drawn into this area. It can't go into the ground, so it rises up and produces showers and thunderstorms. Now up to 700 millibars. The other thing that helped enhance the shear is we had a little bit of spinning a little higher above the atmosphere. You see this area right here with the height lines. This is an upper level low. And you look at the winds here. This is the ascending from Rabbit City. They had southerly winds. And then one from our office, which is more of a southwesterly wind, a drier push coming in from this area. It actually helped create a dry line across the area. And right in this area, it's pretty favorable for severe thunderstorm development. That's right where we were. Now one more step up, 500 millibars, it's about three and a half miles up in the atmosphere. You can see a big broad trough coming in here, negatively tilted. That just basically means it's tilted from west to east across the area. That's a technical definition. And you can see, look at these height lines, and look how they spread out across Wyoming. This is what's called upper level divergence. It also helps enhance lift across the area, basically because air is diverging here, and the atmosphere always tries to balance itself. So the air coming in here can't go into the ground, it gets evacuated out of the top, so more air rises up to meet the uh, to help equalize it. And as a result, you get lift, and with moisture, you get clouds, and you also get showers and thunderstorms. And one more level to look at, we're up to the jet stream level, about 34, 35,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And here's the jet stream right here. Decent jet for this time of year, approaching 100 knots. You can see the jet streak right in this area. And uh, look at where we are in relation to this. Now, to picture the, this here, I've talked about this before, a little review on this the jet dynamics. Basically, if you want lift and, and showers to occur, you want to be in two quadrants of the jet. Now, basically, imagine you're driving the jet stream like a car. You want to be either in the left front quadrant or the right rear quadrant. Now, you're asking me, what does that mean? Well, basically, what that means is the left front, imagine you're in the driver, you're driving it, the, the driver's seat, and the back passenger seat is the right rear. Look where Wyoming is. We're in the left front quadrant, so that helps enhance the lift, so we have even more lift there. And one more thing to look at, you know, I like these. This is this QT diagram that we took uh, during the morning hours. Now, a couple things to notice here. You can see at least the wind barbs right here. You can see we have more south, kind of chaotic at the surface, but then you see it kind of rotating like this in the lower levels of the atmosphere. This is what's called uh, speed shear. Uh, uh, sorry, directional shear. Got ahead of myself there. Helps out the turning of the atmosphere. We also have speed shear, too, going from 20 knots up to about 50 knots here. So the differences there help get those thunderstorms turning. Now, a couple things to notice here. This is the temperature line. This is humidity. Those are the three things that uh, SKUTs measure. A couple things you want to notice here. Number one, we have these little inversions here. It helps put a little bit of a cap on the atmosphere, not enough to shut the thunderstorms off, enough to get the energy really built up at the surface. The other thing you want to notice here, notice how it's kind of close here at the surface. Then we get kind of a bulging out here, and then closer up here. Now, meteorologists call this a loaded gun uh, sounding. Now, this isn't quite as dramatic as what you get, say, in uh, Oklahoma or down in the southeast where they have a lot more moisture coming in. Basically, what you want is a moist layer right at the surface. That's here. And then a little bit of a kind of a drier air mass just above the surface in this area. So it helps uh, build up that instability during the day. When the cap finally breaks on this, you tend to get explosive thunderstorm development and a good chance of severe weather. Show some radars from this right after this. Here's a look at the radar. You can see here's the cell. It developed rapidly as you head toward river and drop the hill. Another cell developed up here, though this one catches up to it and they actually merge and become a pretty good supercell near a life site. It drops some pretty large hail there. Then it actually splits, and you can see one supercell, the northern one, went through KC, and the other one, this is the one that went through Midwest and dropped the hail as well as the tornado. It actually cycled again and ended up dropping another tornado at, at, at the Rochelle Mine to the north of Gillette and actually injured eight people out there when it went through the mine, unfortunately right around their shift change. We'll have a closer look at this supercell in just a minute. Where is a closer look at the supercell that went to the south and the west? You can see those colors really enhance as they head toward uh, I-25. Continued on to the south of Edgerton and over to Campbell County as well, where it cycled and dropped another tornado. 
Now, one more thing I want to point out to here is this recycles. You can actually sometimes see the signature of what's called the bounded weak echo region, a B word as we call it, because we love acronyms in the Weather Service. As it crosses I-25, you can see it right there. That's right about where the tornado formed and continued on for several miles as it crossed 25 as well as 259. Here's a nice little summary of the area that we put together after the event came through. That first cell that went through Fremont County, you can see, started off around Lander, about a half dollar size hill there that really picked up as they headed toward Riverton, especially the east side of town. Golf ball size hill maybe a little bit bigger than that. The result, we had a lot of damage to roofs here from roofers all over the area this summer. Also, uh, a lot of uh, windshields damage as well as car hoods. But the biggest uh, hill was actually reported when you headed further uh, east, where the deeper moisture was, mainly in Detroit as well as Johnson Counties with those tornadic thunderstorms that we had. You can see up to baseball size around uh, Barnum, also around the Midwest area, some uh, very large hill, Gorilla Hill is what a lot of the uh, storm chasers caused this. About an inch around KC. And the reports of tornadoes, basically, I think we had uh, four of those. We had a small one around KC that just briefly touched down, not much damage out of that thing. Then another small one, this is a land spout one that occurred north of the Chrome. We got a really nice picture of that. Go to our Facebook page if you want to see that. And a pretty photogenic one. This one actually occurred down in uh, Sweetwater County near uh, Granger. Uh, this is a land spout tornado. Stayed over open areas, didn't cause any damage, but very photogenic. A really impressive video of that. But the real impressive tornado was around Midwest, just to the south of Midwest. That was a classic, almost Midwestern tornado. A nice cone that came down. And I traveled uh, quite a few miles across the area. Now, most of this went across open country. It did hit one farm. It took a roof off, also flipped a shed over, and damaged some uh, tanks as well. And that is this tornado right here. It's actually the same tornado. Well, that's number four. We'll have number three tomorrow.